Hey gang, Scott here. This video is part of a series about masking in On One Tools, On One Photo Raw, On One Effects. We're talking about the masking brush, and this video in particular is about the perfect brush. This is edge detection for the masking brush. So we'll cover the controls for edge detection, turning it on and off, uh, doing a couple of uh, more advanced things about sampling with it, explain how it all works, all that jazz. So uh, if you haven't checked out the masking brush video itself, go have a look at that one. One, it sets the context for what the tool is all about. This video is just the particular mode for edge detection, the perfect brush. So uh, let's get into it. In a previous video, I brightened these flowers here with a local adjustment using just the masking brush. We're going to repeat that at this time using the perfect brush so you can see the, the differences and how the mask can be more precisely applied. So uh, let's uh, let's get a local adjustment added this time here that automatically adds the adjustment brush works exactly like the masking brush and our settings here. Let's get our flow up to 100. I know this is going to be 100. This right here, the perfect brush, I want to turn that on. When you see that little icon highlighted in blue, that means you are brushing with edge detection turned on. So the way that edge detection works is the brush itself, whatever's in the center of that brush, the color that's in the center is sampled by on one. And as you move around, it's continually looking, you know, am I, am I on this color? Has the color changed? And anything that's a reasonable match to that color gets included in the mask, anything else gets excluded, right? So uh, the best way to look at this is with an example. And we'll use this here. Let me turn off any, um, any view of the mask. If we get to it, we'll have red overlay. But right now, we're not seeing the, the view at all. That's good. And we'll make this uh, adjustment very, very, very obvious. So an exposure of negative 2, make the brush kind of big, okay? And now I will start clicking and dragging through the sky. So click that blue tone under the sky was sampled. And as I move through the blue, notice some of the clouds get affected, some don't. If I move to the edge of where the flower is, you notice the flower is not being affected. Even though my brush is over the flower, it's not being affected because the yellow is quite a far distance from blue in terms of color. It's just not a match, right? And that kind of continues here. And as you can see, I can get more aggressive and that flower is not going to be affected. Now, sometimes I go into the clouds, right? I'm starting to affect the clouds because, let's watch right here, as I cross into this cloud and the sample gets retaken, I start to affect those clouds. So that in a nutshell is the edge detection. It's based on color tones. And if you, your brush center goes over a different color tone, like to continue here, I'll continue brushing. And as soon as I cross into this flower, you ready? Here we go. Boom. I've affected the flower and now I'm getting these nuanced matches of these particular yellow tones. Not like everything isn't getting matched because I'm brushing right now probably a slightly darker tone of yellow as compared to this lighter tone as I move into the next tone. You know, we get a sample, pow, it, it, it affects things again. So as long as you're keeping your brush in a color area that's not the area you want to affect, you're going to be pretty good with this with this perfect brush, right? And an easy way to work with it. Let's let's reset that mask here. If I wanted to do something with the sky here, I can make my brush really really big, and I'm just going to go click 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 click. I'm clicking all around the outside of this flower, and I'm never going to affect it so long as I don't go into those yellow areas, right? And yellow areas could be like this might be considered yellow. Looks like those are far enough away from the flower that I'm not affecting it, even though like a yellowish tone down there, it's not affecting the petals. So that's one you know quick and easy way to work with a perfect brush. 
we saw this particular photo in the AI mask area. So, you know, there's a variety of ways to quickly carve out a subject you're interested in. Um, let's reset that before it <laughs> hurts our eyeballs anymore. Uh, but a second thing I want to point out with the perfect brush, we have the perfect brush turned on. We've talked about this, this sample mode, right? Uh, I'm up here in the sky, my brush a little smaller. And when I click here, I'm sampling that blue tone that's underneath and that's fine until I cross into a different colored area and then I get a different sample. Undo. If you want to lock the color sample so that when you first start brushing, it's like the color that I'm hovering over now, it's the only thing I want you to affect, hold down the command or control key first. So I'm gonna press my command key, I'm holding it down and now I'm clicking and dragging. And the only thing I will affect is the blue or tones close to it that I affected earlier. Even when I cross in and over everything in my photo, right? I am brushing like a, like very, very, very sloppy, but I will not affect anything other than that original sample point. So if you hold down the command or control key, it's like a color sample lock. Pick that color and until I let go of that key, that's the only color that the brush would ever consider. So that's quite useful when you're working uh, you know, intricately in areas here. And I think we'll end up using that uh, when we get into actually adjusting this, uh, this flower. Reset one more time. One other set of controls I wanna show you with the perfect brush itself. They're in the gear menu. I click the gear menu to open that up. I've got this cork with recording. The gear menu thing always shows up on the left-hand side for me. It'll show up underneath your gear menu. But uh, what we have is color threshold and transition. Now I have color threshold and transition set pretty low. Color threshold, what does this mean? If I hover over that, you usually get a little information there. But it basically means the color you've sampled with the perfect brush. What other colors do I consider to be a match? You know, and will it be a more broad match or will it be a narrow match, right? So I'll hover over that again and it's telling you, right? You know, low numbers are more precise. So if you want to be very precise and only sample certain colors, like that blue and then a few blues there, versus if I push this farther out, you know, in that sky example, you know, I'll do a command click again. You know, you can see a lot more is getting colored in, right? That's not as much of a uh, kind of uh, you know, spackled type thing. And I wonder, let me do a command click there again. And it's not affecting the green. So it's not gonna push like from blue all the way into green or a neighboring color, but like blues and aquas, they're getting, you know, stuffed together. So it's not jumping too far down your uh, your color wheel, but that's what this, reset that again, that's what this color threshold has done. And I tend to leave it pretty low, you know, like in the, in the 10 to five range. Transition is, you know, what's the, what's the, the edge of the mask do and you can see a low number is a harsher transition higher numbers are a smooth transition i think the defaults for on one are, are somewhere like this it's like a low threshold and a high transition let's look at that difference again let me actually show you the the, the, the two differences here we had a low transition i'll do that command click again and you can see that i get this um you know kind of kind of rougher type of uh, of transition, especially around edges of, of the mask, where it's, it's a little, yeah, it's a little splotchy, right? Reset that. If I bring the transition up high and we do that same brush stroke, command click, it's smoother. And of course, smoother means it's going to cover more, right? I've, I've covered more of those clouds. In fact, almost all of them by courtesy of that high transition. Now I can't change the transition and have the mask affected. If you watch the masking brush video, all of these controls are per brush stroke. So that's wonderful for you know, the, the ultimate in control. You can tweak and tune every brush stroke, but that also means when you're doing fine tuned work, you need to be a little careful. And if you make a mistake, undo is your friend you can undo things but you can't just uh, say oh you know what that brush stroke i did you know four steps ago let me go change its color transition or let me change its opacity or any of those things 
we can't do that. Um, so this is uh, this is what the perfect brush is all about. Let's uh, let's kind of dial those those controls back in. I tend to like lower transitions, not as high as what I had it before, but we'll leave it around 25 there. Uh, let's reset and uh, let's let's go through an example. So uh, we're brightening the uh, flowers here to make those those yellows be just a, a little a little more inviting than this uh, this this dull looking flower we have here. All right, let's uh, see. We've reset our mask. Let's set exposure to well. We'll set exposure kind of high, right? We want to brighten up the the flowers here. Uh, let's also set our mask view to red overlay. That is fine. Okay, and uh, we'll open up the masking area. Click view so we can see what's going on. We have our perfect brush turned on. We have paint in, and we're interested in affecting the flowers here. So I'm going to use first just standard brush strokes here. So I'll start brushing through and as you can see as I work through these areas I'm just staying in the petals. I'm kind of like going back to the center out to a petal, back to the center, out to a petal. And then when you start doing that pretty quickly I have the perfect brush so I'm getting the, the benefit of that edge detection so it's letting me not have to work too hard for my brushes, and now I'm just doing some single clicks, and I'm able to get a nice clean mask. That was actually a little bug on the petal, so I'll leave that one unmasked. There we go, right? Something like that. Okay, uh, let's turn off our view. So now we can see that that uh, exposure slider is affecting, you know, just that that area, and you can dial it in. Uh, with that perfect brush still turned on, you know, I can I can do my same thing. And this one here, you know, sweep through, get the center part, sweep out to those petals, and then reach down there. This was too much. I want to take that back. Shift X to paint out. And I'll tidy that up in just a moment here because that was too much taking out. So we'll do an opacity half percent or 50 percent and kind of just put some of that back in there. Let's take a look at our mask. There we go. Um, I want to click those back in. Oh, let's put that opacity back up to 100 percent, make that a little faster. Okay, great. Turn off the view and now I have that brightness everywhere just on those flowers and finally it can, it can dial in the right look and you know, there feels good. Now is the mask absolutely pristine? This is where your different masking view modes are quite helpful. Talked about the masking view modes in the introductory video. We're looking at red right now. If I switch this over to grayscale, you know, we can see, ah, you know what? I, I missed a couple of spots or not missed. I, I went, I went overboard. So let's switch to paint out. I'll turn off the perfect brush now just to make sure I can clean up the areas that I don't want affected, right? I'll turn back on the perfect brush. Keyboard shortcut, this is very helpful for the perfect brush. Command or Control R. Notice the icon at the top is now back on. And now I can use the edge detection to help me get right around that flower there. So your keyboard shortcuts are very helpful. Like the center here, I'll command R, I'll turn off the perfect brush, shift X to paint in, and I can take care of the center part of this flower where my color transition being as low as it was, some of those nuanced yellows, little tiny bits that were missing. But this is a pretty fast masking job, and believe me, it's a lot faster when you're not narrating it. So <laughs> it's uh, the perfect brush is, is great to uh, to get that that color detection, uh, edge detection done for you. Uh, so so that's the example. You know, recapping. Uh, learn your keyboard shortcuts. I think is a is a is a good thing to take away here. Command or Control R, so you can turn it off and on as you're working through your photo without having to go back up to the toolbar all the time. Faster workflow and the sampling is done at the center of the brush. So that plus or minus, that's at the center of the brush. That's where the color sample is done. If you're working with a custom brush and the perfect brush, 
Uh, you'll have to take your best guess at what the center is because sometimes the shapes are very odd, but it'll be more or less in the center of whatever the, the shape is. Uh, so, so do keep that in mind if you're using something other than the classic uh, circular paintbrush. And uh, the final bit is being able to fine tune the color, trans uh, the color uh, threshold and the transition. If you are working with a photo that is like very monochromatic, you've got like lots of like nuanced tones of, of green or something, take the color threshold down very low so you can target just those color tones you want. And if you want something that's smoother and more gradual, you can put that color threshold up higher and then the transition will give you a, a natural uh, fade or feather to, to the, the detection that the perfect brush is going to do. Uh, I'll tend to keep my color threshold very low and or my color threshold, yeah, color threshold very low and transition reasonably low. That seems to be a good starting point uh, for the brush work that I do. Hope you found the video helpful and useful. You got any questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.